So we're getting into the year and the work is starting to get harder. Kids are starting to get confused. They're kind of like, huh, what? What is happening? So it's time to break out one of the best tools in our arsenal, in my opinion, the instructional video. Hi, my name is Melanie Ludi and I run this YouTube channel on teaching tips, productivity, and the occasional vlog. And a lot of my teaching tips involve technology. And I've actually been making videos for over a year and a half now. So I feel like I have a lot of good tips to give you guys on when to make videos, how to make them, how to publish them, and all the bits and pieces that go into it. Let's hop in. So first, please give this video a big thumbs up down below. It helps others find this content. Also consider subscribing if you are not yet. Also, if you hear crunching in the background, I'm really sorry. It's Bruno. There he is. <laughs> okay, so first thing, let's talk about when are you gonna make an instructional video? Because sometimes they're a bit time consuming to make and like most people are not gonna find the time every week to make one or make one multiple for every day. So let's talk special circumstances here. Biggest one is when you know you're gonna be out. I was out a day a few weeks ago to get ready for my wedding and I made an instructional video for that day so I didn't have to have a sub come in because as a virtual teacher, I have that option. So other things that might apply to you. So when it's work done outside of school, so you flipped classroom people, this is for you. Or if you're asking students to do like an extra credit lab outside of school, like I just did, that would be a great time to do it. Other one would be just labs in general. Labs, I feel like people need a lot of help setting up so that if they can watch you do it a couple times, it always is better. If it's a specifically difficult concept, so something that comes to mind for me might be photosynthesis if they want to be able to go back and check it. Evolution, natural selection. Those are pretty deep topics. I feel like students generally need more than one go through with it. So having a video they can reference judgment free would be really nice. Demos that are better pre-planned. So sometimes you want a wider shot for a demo and it's just really not conducive to Zoom or sometimes you need things at home that you can't bring into school. Like if you wanna show chopping a tree for part of your demo, you're probably not gonna be able to do that at school. So you're gonna to wanna to have that pre-filmed, you know? And then other things might be like a introduction to a project, something really large, something that's gonna impact their grade, something that families are gonna to have to tag team into at some point. That's when a video is really key because then you can send the video to the students, to the families, so they can be on board and help you out with completing that project. Okay, so let's move into planning. So when you're planning out this video, plan to do it in one take. You can obviously edit video, but that's a skill and that's gonna be in next week's video, so hang tight for that. But plan to do it in one take. So that means have all your supplies that you're gonna need for this video next to you. So when I made my water cycle video for my students last week, I had to gather all of my supplies. I had to have all of that with me so I could do it in one take. The next thing to think about is what do students need to see? Do they need to see your face talking about something? Do they need to see the ruler? Do they need a doc cam? Because you're gonna be doing a math problem or you're gonna be sketching something and they need to see your hands versus your face. Do you need to show them like a PowerPoint or a document? Those things are gonna affect how you're gonna film it. So if you're showing like a document, um, a slideshow, something like that, I recommend Zoom. Okay, so in your Zoom settings, they're gonna look like this. Settings, cloud recording, and then you're gonna make sure this little thing is turned on. Cloud recording is gonna save it as a link versus like an actual MP4 file on your physical computer. I would also recommend Zoom if you're gonna use a document camera, but you're gonna to need to have a document camera or you're gonna to need to finagle your phone so it like hovers so you can write and it'll show things. That would be a harder ask. 
most of your schools will probably have a document camera that you can borrow, so I would just try and go for that option. If you are going to do a lab setup though, Zoom is generally not as helpful because the screen is only so wide and because the film quality gets really poor the further back you go and you need a wider shot. Like if you're gonna watch me back here and I have to pour things from this cup into a bag, like here, hold on. I needed to show me putting the cup in the bag. So I needed a wider shot. Zoom's generally not as good for this. Also right now, <laughs> you can see the cup, but not really my face. My face is not in light at all because this is where the light's coming from and it's hitting me from behind. So it's making all these shadows on my face. This is terrible lighting. If you can, hold on. See, my face is already better. Although you just see my mouth at the moment. You want to face the window. And then when I'm filming on my phone, um, I always have the screen face me because I want to know what's in the shot. And honestly, the difference between your front camera and your back camera is not going to be big enough to overcome this benefit of seeing what is actually in the shot. Because you would hate to like film it all and then realize the things you need are not even in frame. So just film it on your front facing camera or your selfie camera rather than your rear camera. Next thing, outline your video. So you see, I wrote an outline for this entire video because I wanted to remember what I was gonna to talk to you guys about. Also, I keep like looking at myself in the reflection instead of at the camera. So this is at the camera, this is at my face. Camera, face. So you'll see the difference in like where the focus is if you can remember, try to look at your camera, not at your face, but the temptation is very hard because you're trying to like make sure everything is in the shot and it's just, it's very hard. It's a practice thing, but bring your videos to the next level if you can remember. Okay, so you filmed it, now what? So if you filmed it in Zoom, your life is gonna be a lot easier. So once it's recorded, it'll show up in your recordings here in Zoom and then what you're gonna do is actually click the blue part that says like my class or like your meeting room or whatever it is. When you're in there, then it'll show you like the recording and all the things that come with it. I almost always get rid of this chat file. So when you click that in your Zoom, there'll be like a little trash can that shows up. You can click that and get rid of the chat for the recording. Then you hit copy shareable link and then you can just put that on any kind of like hyper doc, hyper slides that you have. That's gonna be most of your things, to be honest. When it gets dicey is kind of lab setups. Sorry, science teachers, I'm looking at you. So for lab setups, you might film it on your phone. Or if you're doing some kind of other demo that really doesn't work well with Zoom and the size of the shot, you're gonna be doing it on your phone. So on the phone, it's gonna be saved as sometimes it's a move, sometimes it's an MP4. Either way, your best bet is going to be to upload it to YouTube. So I've recorded a video here. So this is the video I'm gonna to upload to YouTube just to show you guys how to do it. So let me clear that. So we're in YouTube here. Then you're gonna hit this plus button, upload a video, pick this one. So this is the test video that I'm gonna to upload to YouTube so you can see how to upload things. Okay, so you can write a title You can add a description. Here's the important part. You're gonna change this to unlisted. So anyone with the link can view. Then you hit next. Is it made for kids? Technically, you guys should hit yes because it is made for students. What this is gonna mean is that it can't be monetized. So you can't make money on this video if for some reason it went viral or if you have an active YouTube channel. For you guys, it's probably not gonna matter but technically you should hit yes. Then you'd hit upload. It's gonna think about it here in that bottom corner where it says library. It might take a while, just as an FYI. Here's our test video. So my video is uploaded, processed, it's ready to watch. So I can click see video. So this is the test video that I'm gonna to upload to YouTube so you can see how to upload things. You wanna mark your video as unlisted. 
Private means only people who have the link. So you would have to individually send kids that link, which would be a bother. Unlisted is better. It still won't come up in search, so people won't like find it and be like, what did you just post? But it'll be available for your students and it solves a lot of your problems. Okay, so that'll wrap up the first part of this video, which is when you're gonna choose to make an instructional video, how to plan for it, and then get it to your students. Next week, we're gonna talk about some more advanced options. So like, if you wanted to edit it, if you wanted to add some things, how would you do it? If you wanted to make it a better quality product, how would you do that? So stay tuned and I'll see you next week, guys. Bye.